Hello guys and welcome to my workstation. I am working on a new printer build and I thought I would give my old Ender 3 the respect it deserves before I start my new build. Here you can see my mini workshop. I have all the necessary tools within arm's reach, so I can work efficiently on my projects. I bought this Ender 3 back in December of 2019, right when COVID started flying in the air. This Ender 3 was my go-to lab rat for any experimentations. I have modded it in many ways and the most recent was the installation of linear rails. Although, that was a botched installation and left the Ender 3 in a sorry state. Don't get me wrong, it still works and prints are acceptable, but nothing to be proud of. I have decided to do a complete teardown and rebuild the Ender so I have a reliable machine ready at hand when I start my BLV project. In this video I am going to disassemble the printer and reflect on the choices that were made that brought the printer to this state. Starting with the first and most obvious, I did not have a sufficient length of linear rail. I had a 500mm rail that I was going to use for the Z-axis, so I cut it in half and effectively lost 50mm on the Z-build height. The rails are also about 4 years old now and exposed to the elements. They are showing signs of corrosion although they seem to function properly. I had lost the original fan shroud so I printed a replacement from Thingiverse and been using it for the past few months. Here you can see that I did not have the proper spacers when I removed the V-rollers to install the linear rails so I just used a bunch of M4 bolts. Starting with the teardown, I am going to remove the bolts that hold in the fan shroud, they are tricky to get to, and took a lot longer than I care to admit. With the fan out of the way, I can access the hot end and remove it by unscrewing the bolts that hold it in place. This is the standard Creality hot end that came with the printer. I did replace the heat brake at some point with a bimetal one. It has worked good so far even with PLA and I did not have any jams. It's always good to see a clean heat block without any signs of leaking plastic. With the hot end out of the way, I can remove the bolts that fix the aluminum plate to the rail carriage. I am also going to remove the belt as it will make the disassembly easier. You can see that I struggled quite a lot with drilling the holes in this plate, and never really got them to line up properly. The x-axis end stop was also not being triggered at the right place, so I just superglued a nut onto the plate. I really tortured this pure machine, but it served as a great learning experience. You can probably tell that the bolts holding the rails are very loose. It's surprising the rail just didn't fall off while printing. I guess they came loose over time with vibrations as I had not used any Loctite on them. This is the Creality glass bed that I had purchased separately. I ripped a chunk out of the glass when I was printing ABS with ABS slurry. The print stuck too well and took the glass with it. So from that day onwards, I reversed the glass bed, and I have been printing on the smooth side ever since. Here I quickly unscrew the bolts that hold the power supply. This is a generic power supply that came with the printer. Later on they switched to Meanwell units which are safer and more reliable. Although I did not face any issues with this. Again for the x-axis motor mount, I did not have the proper length M3 bolts, so I just used nuts and washers as spacers to get the job done. I had upgraded the extruder to a metal unit, but it is not dual drive. It is still the standard Creality extruder. The original one was acrylic and they are known to break after some use. Here is some more evidence of my struggle to get the rails aligned properly and my generous use of washers as spacers. If this printer was a child, child services would have taken it away long ago. I converted to three-point bed leveling because I was having a lot of trouble leveling the bed after installing the linear rails. The root cause, however, 
was the botched installation. Here you can see that only one bolt is holding the Y-axis plate onto the linear rail, and it's almost free to move about as it pleases. During this teardown I have thought many times how the printer was still running and able to print. It goes to show that the Ender 3 is very well designed and extremely robust no matter how you torture it. By design there were supposed to be two rails for the Y-axis but I never got them aligned and the Y-axis kept binding, so eventually I disconnected one. The new Ender 3 uses a 4040 extrusion for the Y-axis, and you can see why. This 2040 is very flimsy and I plan to fix it during the rebuild. Here I am removing the controller board. It is version 1.1.4, in other words ancient. It uses the 4988 drivers and they are very noisy. Newer Ender 3 printers are shipped with TMC silent drivers. With only the frame remaining, I will quickly unscrew the bolts and disassemble all the extrusions. This is the Ender 3 graveyard. The bones of the dragon. The tomb of the ancient printer. After my failed attempt at upgrading the printer to linear rails, I finally ordered the BLV Ender 3 kit. This is going to be one of many upgrades that I will install to bring my Ender 3 back to its full glory. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.